The iPod Touch 7th generation might look nearly exactly like the iPod Touch 5th generation from 2012, but it released in 2019 and features specs pulled from the iPhone 7. And it's cheap, at only $200, still being sold by Apple right now. Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and there's no question that the iPod line has been kind of abandoned by Apple in recent years. But the iPod Touch 7 manages to stand alone as the final iPod, and so it's time to ask the question. Is is it worth buying in 2021? Probably not, but yes, but maybe not, but probably not, but maybe? It's hard to give a good answer when it comes to discussing the iPod Touch. While on the surface, it actually isn't terrible, being essentially an iPhone 7 without the whole phone part, and running the latest version of iOS, all for $200 American. But it still has the same problems every iPod Touch since the 5th gen has had, just terrible, awful, garbage battery life. If you're only in it for the music, so, you know, to use it as an iPod, it probably will do you fine, in all honesty. It comes with 32 gigs of storage by default, and you you can up it to 128 or 256 gigs if you're willing to spend 299 or 399. And uh, yeah, it's weird to think there are probably people out there this year spending $400 on this iPod, but you can if your wallet's feeling just a bit too heavy. But beyond just music, the iPod Touch isn't the same great device that it used to be for young people, and of course those who just don't need an iPhone. I bought the iPod Touch 6th generation just after launch in 2015. At the time it had good specs matching the not even year old iPhone 6, while well, it was slightly underclocked, but it was still pretty good. From the get-go, it would struggle to last me the day, even with a lightly moderate amount of use. It will depend on what you're doing, but if you spend more than a couple hours on it per day, which is very reasonable, you probably will need to keep a charger nearby. This won't be the case for everyone. Anytime I make a statement remotely definitive like that, I inevitably get comments saying that they have an iPod Touch, and it's amazing, and I'm stupid for daring to say otherwise. And you know what? The truth is, at $200, the iPod Touch is actually very good value, but it's also a very, very niche product. One that I only think works for children or someone who just needs an iPod for music to stick in their car or to bring along jogging. This isn't 2012 or 2015 anymore. Everyone and their mother's mother has a smartphone and it leaves iPods in a much less desirable position. What am I getting at here? Well, it's difficult to actually recommend buying the iPod Touch 7 for nearly anyone. Is it worth the price of $200? Yes. And it is pretty unlikely we'll see an upgrade in the near future, so there's no point in waiting. We got the iPod 5 in 2012, the iPod 6 in 2015 and then the iPod 7 in 2019. At that rate, we've still got at least another couple years before Apple makes any changes. Or perhaps they'll do what I thought they'd do last time and just get rid of the iPod altogether. I mean, they must be selling some iPod Touches if they keep it around, but I do have to wonder how many they're actually selling, given the market for an iPod Touch is just so small nowadays. But as interesting as I find it, the iPod itself really isn't that interesting. In 2021, we have a world of glass and near bezel-less phones, and the iPod, um, it isn't that. With it, you get a bare bones, stripped down experience with a old design. And for $200, I wouldn't want anything different. So let's start here with the design. It should be familiar given it hasn't changed hardly in about nine years. We've got a small all aluminum body with a four inch retina display, basic plain home button without touch ID, and a good few color options in red, space gray, gold, silver, pink, and blue. I of course have the product red here and I really, really love it. The red aluminum is so gorgeous and the sleek ultra thin light design is something to behold. It's the complete opposite of the bulky big iPhones we've had in recent years, although the iPhone 12 has done a lot to change that. The iPod Touch is almost too light. No, I'll say it, it is too light. It doesn't even hardly feel like I'm holding a device. It feels more like a toy than anything else. It's so, so compact, and it's easy to understand why this could be good. It's an iPod, in theory, it's used to be brought around to play music and maybe games, so it should be as easy as possible to fit in your pocket or backpack or purse or whatever. The problem here is that the device is so, so thin, and it just doesn't need to be, especially because the battery life suffers directly because of it. Ah uh, yes, the battery life. I'll get to that, but uh, let's finish up with the design first. That retina display looks quite good. It hasn't changed hardly in nine years, but I'm not complaining because it still looks nice and sharp, even if it isn't at the level of, say, the iPhone 10 and better, as it is LCD. Of course, we have the home button and thick bezels here, and that home button, believe it or not, is the last classic one on any Apple device. And when I say classic, I mean the last non-Touch ID home button. I do wish Apple had just stuck Touch ID on here. It would 
have gone a long way to helping the device feel more premium and less ignored, but they likely didn't want to change anything about the design from the former iPod 5 and 6 so they could just keep using the same shell. But the one single benefit to that old shell is found when we look at the bottom of the iPod. We of course have the lightning port and beside it, what is that thing? Well, dear children, that is the headphone jack. One of the last remaining on iOS devices, along with the lower tier iPads, Apple is still selling. You can even get a cheap pair of Apple earpods in the box, something that is no longer included with iPhones nowadays, which I still find absurd. This iPod has stayed the same for so darn long. The iPod itself is really sleek, it's outdated in many ways, but it is genuinely impressive how much hardware is crammed into this absolutely tiny little device. But it looks the same as it did in 2012, basically. It's missing the little loop thing that was pointless, but still, it's basically the same device. And it's crazy how little attention Apple's paid it over the years. Let's take a look at the camera, not one of the iPod's bright points. We have a single 8 megapixel sensor on the back, that's right, 8 megapixels, which we haven't seen on an iPhone since the iPhone 6 in 2014. You know, 7 years ago, and now I just realized 2014 was 7 years ago, and I don't like that. Regardless, this camera is bad, so bad. It can take an okay photo outside with good lighting, but it's very inconsistent, and if you take a photo indoors, you'll be getting a grainy mess. Video can be filmed in up to 1080p at 60 frames per second, that's right, no 4K video on this 2019 device, so there's that. I doubt anyone is getting the iPod Touch nowadays to be their main camera, so I won't rag on it too hard, but if someone's getting the iPod to be their main device in general, there's a good chance they'll be disappointed, and that goes double for the selfie camera. It has a measly, pathetic 1.2 megapixels. Again, same as the 7-year-old iPhone 6. It can record video in up to 720p. If someone younger is getting this as their main device, there's a good chance they'll be wanting to use the Instagrams and the Snapchats and the social medias in general, and this selfie camera isn't going to be the most flattering. But have no fear, it does come with a timer mode, as advertised by Apple. They had so little to say about the selfie camera, they added in timer mode. That's some crazy technology right there. Speaking of crazy technology, with the iPod Touch 7, we get Apple's A10 chipset and 2 gigabytes of RAM, the only real upgrade over the previous iPod. And in all fairness, it's a big, big upgrade, being way faster than the iPod 6 and giving us the ability to run iOS 14. And believe it or not, iOS 14 actually runs pretty darn well. I'm not sure I'm willing to go as far as to say that it's fast, but the experience is actually pretty smooth all in all, and I didn't see too much slowdown. The A10 means the iPod likely will get iOS 15 at the end of this year, and there's a chance it could even get iOS 16, although probably not past that. This is all the guessing game for me, just given Apple's past patterns and how they support their older devices. The fact that you can even get such a competent device for $200 that thanks to iOS 14 actually can run basically anything the over $1,000 iPhone 12 Pro Max can run is absolutely mind-boggling, and it's the major highlight of this otherwise easy-to-ignore iPod. For $200, you're getting a brand new device that can essentially download nearly any app, any game, and run it perfectly fine right now in 2021, and that is an achievement. But just because you can doesn't mean you should. While performance is good, the battery life is not. The batteries are tiny, just like they've been forever, and that means just a terrible experience if you attempt to use this as your main driver. Researching for this video, I found complaint after complaint about the iPod's battery, and honestly, I'm surprised I didn't find more. Take it from someone who used the iPod Touch 6 back in 2015 from launch. If you need a phone but can't afford an actual iPhone, or you want a device to play games on and use regularly, this is not it. The battery life will drive you crazy. Are there workarounds? Of course. A battery case is always an option, and the one benefit of the iPod design never changing is that there's a wide range of variety out there. You could also just keep a portable battery charger nearby, they're generally pretty cheap and handy. And of course, the classic, just plug it in whenever you need to, and of course, charge it overnight. It can work, but it is an iPod, not a phone, so don't expect it to be one. Of course, there's no SIM card options or anything like that for the iPod Touch. It's actually shocking how many people I've had asking me about that in previous videos. This is an iPod Touch. It can download apps, and it can text with iMessage over Wi-Fi, but that's about it. Really, I think the iPod Touch 7 shows the laziness of Apple. Writing this review half the time felt like I was writing a review for an old, approaching decade-old iPhone like I do so often. But no, this iPod is from 2019. The design is the same as 2012. The hardware beyond the chipset is basically the same as 2015, but for better or for worse, the $200 iPod Touch is still being sold in 2021. It runs iOS 14 well. It can do currently pretty much anything you'd want it to. For a spare device to run music off of, this is pretty darn great. For a main device, unless it's for someone too young for a phone or someone who really doesn't need to do much but wants to download basic apps or games, it will do the job. And even if you regret it down the line, the $200 price tag isn't too tough to swallow. Is the iPod Touch worth buying in 2021?
2021? Surprisingly, yeah, it can be. Should you buy it? Probably not. But of course, that depends on what you think. So make sure you let me know in the comments down below. And are any of you actually out there using this iPod right now? Or even an older one? If you found this video interesting, maybe hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content just like this. You can follow me over on Twitter and Instagram at 91 underscore tech if you'd like to for some reason. And with that all being said, thank you so much for watching. I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and I will see you all next time.